have beautiful internet friends and puppies. Hi. Welcome back. I got all three puppies in the frame. This is never gonna happen again. Hello, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back. Oh, it's been a week. I haven't actually filmed anything in about a week. I've been taking a break. Videos have still been going up, obviously, because I have stuff pre-recorded. How am I supposed to get work done with these adorable babies? Yeah. Can I, can I sit in my own frame? Is that cool? I feel like every single day is a roller coaster. I'm not a particularly goals oriented person. I mean, I, I am to some extent, like there are things that I aim for in my life, but I'm not someone who goes crazy if I like don't make goals and don't make deadlines. But to some extent, I think we usually do have things we aim for in our lives or timelines or things that we're kind of shooting for either consciously or subconsciously. And this is the first time in my life where I feel like I've actually had to completely abandon that. I mean like completely abandoned and every day is so different when it comes to this and this I literally never know what to expect and I had one of the coolest days since amputation this week like it was I want to cry thinking about it It was so cool I'm gonna tell you guys about it in this video and then I had three days where I was in a lot of pain and I couldn't walk and I couldn't use it and it looked weird like there were odd markings on it and I was like I don't even know what's going on and so I honestly feel like I've started to come more to peace with the idea that there is no way to predict how any of this is gonna go and it's just gonna be a roller coaster. It's that game we played when we were kids, red light, green light. Simon says, you know, like stop and start and that's okay. And so today I'm gonna tell you about a cool moment I had. I'm gonna show you something cool and I'm gonna walk you through the process of actually putting on my prosthetic leg. Now before we go any further, I have to tell you, this is not, this is not the same leg that you guys have seen before. What? So this past week in literally the middle of a snowstorm, like the city was half shut down, look it up. I was asked by a local prosthetics clinic I was hooked up by my prosthetist up in Denver that a prosthetics clinic in Colorado Springs was hosting a direct socket fitting like seminar for other prosthetics people, for, for prosthetists to go and learn how to do this new kind of fitting because it's kind of newer on the market and they need to be trained in it. And they can't be trained in it if they don't have an amputee and they didn't have an amputee. And I live like 20 minutes away from where they were doing it. And he was like, listen, if you go, if you give them like four hours of your time, if you sit and model a leg for them, basically they'll give you a new leg. Not this part, this part's the same, but, but this part, and they may even get it to fit better. On top of that, I was gonna be sitting in front of like six or seven prosthetists, all who could give their input on like what was good and what was bad and how I was walking and all of that. And I was like, excuse my language, but hell yes, let's do this. And the issues that I was having with my knee were escalating, like it was really getting very painful. So I thought, I'm not really gonna be able to do anything with it, but at least I can sit there. At least maybe they can get an even better fit. And I'll have a second socket. If I ever get a running blade, I won't have to pay for the socket part out of pocket, which is incredible. So I went down there. I brought my camera and then I decided that I was kind of overwhelmed and I was there alone with a, with a bunch of guys doing stuff and I thought I'm just gonna breathe I'm just gonna relax and try to enjoy this process and soak up as much as I can so I have absolutely no footage from it but what happened <laughs> what happened is that I was able to walk hands-free for about five minutes after four hours of them tweaking things and getting it right and looking at what was going on and they were able to adjust the way that my that my foot, that this angle was positioned to take pressure off of my knee. It was insane. They like adjusted a couple screws, tiny little bit, and it brought the pressure off of my knee, which is nuts to think about. And they got the fit a little bit tighter, which was great. And on top of that, one of the coolest things is they figured out the height was wrong. So I was stepping down like every time I was stepping, but it's kind of hard to tell when you're learning to walk like what's wrong about how you're walking, you know? And once they brought it up, that like eliminated the crazy migraines that I was getting from walking that way because when your alignment is like that far off, it can really mess with your spine, with your neck and with migraines. That has helped out so much. I was legitimately walking around that office, not looking down at the ground, hands free for like five or 10 minutes. It was insane. Now I haven't been able to replicate that just yet on my own, but that's okay. It's a slow process. So let's get this leg on and I want to demonstrate a new skill that I have to you guys. Shrinker off. Whenever I go to put my leg on now, I'm kind of checking to make sure nothing's swollen or weird looking or discolored. Now I'm putting on this special silicone lotion, kind of like lubricant for your leg, on spots that hurt or stick or feel weird. And it really helps like with some of that friction. Step one complete. Next we have the liner. You guys have seen this before. It's the weird sticky stuff on the inside that's like aloe vera lined. Just gotta be a more effective way of turning these inside out. The end of my little nubbin. Ow. We avoid dog hair at all costs, which is basically impossible in my household. You just roll it up. It's what we do, Sophie. Socks for my leg. 
Oh, did she get dog hair on it? If the dogs touch this stuff, it's like just, oh, so full of dog hair and doesn't stick to you as well. So I'm still figuring out this, the mechanics of how to make sure that my leg doesn't get covered in dog hair. Usually I just keep the stuff in the, the bathroom that they don't go in. I've just been putting like a, like a cap sock on the end of it for now. See this little valve down here? I hold that down. I kind of hear the air going out. All right, my leg's too swollen right now, so I've gotta take this off so it'll fit. There we go. Roll this part down to make sure the suction actually stays in. Use all our baby strength to get this thing up. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a leg. There are definitely hot spots on my leg, like, like places that definitely are not comfortable, like the end of my leg. Get a little bit better at that. Yes, I know I could use a shoehorn, but it's on the other side of the room. I really don't wanna get over there. So, before I show you this cool new thing that I can do, I try to warm up my leg a little bit by kind of walking back and forth using my crutch a little bit. It makes a huge difference. Like, if I have my leg on for five minutes or so and I'm putting some pressure on it, it starts feeling a lot better a lot faster than if I just like try to walk without assistance right away the second I put it on. It's kind of like gotta numb down a little bit. Cause it's not like super comfortable when I first put it on, but it's getting there. It's time! That's my impersonation of Bruce Buffer. Time for the main event, guys. This was actually a request, I believe, by, by Joe, Joe Harris. It may have been by a couple of you, actually. Can I get up and down the stairs with my prosthetic leg? That's actually way more complicated than I would think it is. Hard, flat ground is a godsend when it comes to learning how to walk. And so different terrains, different surfaces, trying to go up and down a stair is really good training, but it's not easy. But, figure something out this week. Queen of the world! Not actually, but I did climb the stairs without assistance, actually stepping up with each of my foot instead of like stepping up with my good foot, bringing my prosthetic foot up, stepping with my good foot, bringing my prosthetic up. Like trying to climb the stairs with my prosthetic leg has been such a mental exercise, much like any of learning how to walk has been like actually thinking every step, like, okay, bring your bring your heel back far enough that your toes aren't gonna catch and then step up through through your butt muscles so like you're actually carrying yourself the proper way and bring your other leg through like it's such a mental game but it's a game that I get to play now and bit by bit now I went up and down the stairs like five times to film that I'm about tapped out there's a spot on the bottom of my leg where my tibia is sawed off like where it comes down right that is still really not comfortable keep in mind it is only eight eight and a half weeks after my amputation it could just be healing time it could be the way the prosthetic is fitting it could be a lot of different things so I'm going back in on Tuesday again to have my these is adjusted, see what we can do. I'm not gonna do anything that hurts it. <laughs> I'm gonna take it easy. Most of the day today, I'll probably keep it on, but I'm gonna be using a crutch. Here's the thing though, guys, my knee does not hurt right now. My knee does not hurt going up and down the stairs. Yeah, I'll be honest, going down the stairs is gonna take a little while to learn how to do without hands. There's just something about it that, that isn't quite clicking up here. I still do a little bit of this uh, staggering going down the stairs. It just feels safer. Hi, friend. Gotta hydrate after that crazy workout, am I right? Thanks for caring about the little things with me, like walking in the snow for the first time or walking up the stairs. These obviously aren't like earth shattering massive videos, but it's the little stuff that is such a big deal. Like especially looking back over the last 12 months when man, everything was so unpredictable and it still is, but it's so cool to be able to take just those small pieces and figure them out. It feels incredible and it feels incredible that you guys care and that you're here with me for them. So thank you. I don't know guys, those puppies are looking pretty cute may have to go cuddle with them. Thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me. A huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for making these videos possible and supporting us during this time. Each and every one of you watching, I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be up here. Puppies don't belong on Ottomans. Oh, God.